Greetings comrades, Multigame Master one reporting in, and welcome back to Let's Play 100% Banjo-Tooie. In the last episode, we've done some backtracking and came to an impasse in which we couldn't get inside Grunty Industries. In this episode, we're going to find a way to get inside Grunty Industries. We're back here at the I.O. Hag's Clifftop, and before recording, I took the liberty of calling Chuffy the Train, because I believe that we can use him to get inside Grunty Industries. So let's step on this go switch and travel our way to Grunty Industries. All aboard! Notice how the cabin glitches back and forth on Chuffy the Train, by the way. Right at that instance. Now with Chuffy the Train, we should be able to get inside Grunty Industries. And indeed, I was right. Now this is what I call breaking and entering. This is the only way in which you'll be able to get inside Grunty Industries the first time around. Even during my first playthrough, I struggled with this a whole lot. I was very confused as to how to get inside Grunty Industries until I found a train switch outside. And I figured, hey, maybe Chuffy the Train can help me get in. And I was right. Now to get things started, we have a brand new enemy here known as a Clang. This enemy is tough as nails to defeat. It takes three hits in order to defeat him. But you could probably use something even more powerful to bring him down in one hit. Like a grenade egg or something. Now over here, while we move along this catwalk, we will find a box which we can destroy and inside we have a shock jump disc pad. And if we move along the bars here without falling off, Dead ahead of us, we will find an extra honeycomb piece, which we will go ahead and take right about now. There we go. Now, let's see what's beyond this passageway. Up ahead is a spy eye cam. If you get detected by it, security forces are deployed. Alert! Alert. Intruders, Intruders detected. detected. Activate, Activate the, the tin tops. These are the tin tops that they were talking about. You can defeat them, but only when their core is exposed. Also, you don't want to get close to them, otherwise you will get an electric shock from them. You can also take out the spy eye cam in order to reduce the security measures inside each room throughout the whole entire industries. Now real quick before we get a move on, I'm going to grab these notes before the spy eye cam comes back. Okay, let's get a move on. We have a lot of the factory to explore, for we just got started. Now let's see what we can find over here. Waste disposal plant. Access denied. Door has insufficient power to open. Battery required. Well, what kind of battery could we use to open the door? Unless... Maybe we could use one of those Baza Super Life batteries. And there's one located above the world entry and exit outside Grunty Industries. But we're gonna have to find a way to get outside from here. Over here we have some notes, which I will go ahead and take. By the way, just a bit of a heads up guys, this is my favorite level in the whole entire game, so I'm really happy to get started on this right away. Here's the service elevator, let's see if we can use it. Access denied. The service elevator can be used by mechanical personnel only. What if I pretended I was a robot? I am a robot. I rule over Grunty Industries. Keeping things operative. Nope, that didn't work. <laughs> Let's just get a move on elsewhere. This passageway will take us into the workers' quarters. And real quick, before we move, I'm going to take out that security camera over there. It's hard to spot it initially, but when you get a good look at it, you can see it right away. And if we bust down this door with a grenade egg, inside we will find Lago. Hey there, Banjo. Lago! What are you doing here? Well, Grunty ripped me out of her mansion and stuck me in here. Boy, you should see the mess some of those workers make. I don't want to know! Anyway, someone thought it funny to fill me full of paper. I really need unblocking, if you wouldn't mind. We do, actually! Suck it up, Kazooie. Now, how are we supposed to unclog Lago? There isn't a plunger to be found in this bathroom. Well, I can think of one way of doing it, and that requires the bell drill. I'm sorry about this, Kazooie. Did that help? Yep, I can feel a movement in my u bend You better stand back. This could be messy. 
A Cheeto page stuck in a toilet. That's just gross. It's a Cheeto book page. No use to me though. I only like the quilted stuff. I guess you can have it. Well, if you like quilted stuff, then why don't you just get some bounty? Paper, that is. The quilted quicker kicker rubber bounty. I don't know why I just did that, but I just felt like it. It was such an obvious reference right there. <laughs> now, I hear someone crying. This must be that guy. This is Skivvy. Look at the state of my overalls. I'll be in real trouble if I can't find a way of getting them clean. Well, I can't really think of a way to get the overalls clean for you unless if we spit shine on them. But then again, that probably wouldn't help. I'm sure we'll find a way to clean you up. Look over here, we have a picture of Humba Wumba. Let's see what happens if we jump into it like Super Mario 64. Well, that just happened. <laughs> But inside this room, we have a signpost. Try looking here for the filthy workers. 1. Outside the back door. 2. On floor 1's compactor. 3. Floor 2. 4. Floor three's boiler plant. 5. Floor 5. 6. In the room next door. Well, we already know one of the locations of the workers. But the rest we're gonna have to keep in mind for later. Real quick, I'm gonna take out that camera. It's annoying how it respawns within a few seconds. On this refrigerator, we have some logos. Banjo-Tooie, Banjo-Kazooie, Rare. Rare definitely has done a good job in making themselves known within this game. Of course, we all do know that Rare and Nintendo are the ones who have made this game. So it isn't really much of a surprise for us. They're more like breaking the fourth wall. Now, where is Jam Jars? I want to learn that move Claw Climber Boots soon, because I've been seeing a few of them lately. Here he is! Claw Climber Boots! Wear these boots and no more falls, as they let you walk up walls. Let me tell you how it's done, Kazooie's footprints up you run! That'll be all. Dismissed. Thank you, Jam Jars. We can now use the Claw Climber Boots. My favorite boots in the whole entire game. They will be useful for future areas coming up. And also maybe past areas. But that's for later. Right now we're going to climb our way to the very top of this elevator shaft. Second floor. Geez, climbing up this elevator shaft reminds me of climbing up ropes in a gym. I have done this while I was in middle school, but I couldn't reach the very top because I lacked the physical strength. That's a true story. Third floor. Geez, how many floors are in this factory anyway? Let me guess, I reckon that this is the fourth floor? Yep. This is making me a bit nervous. I wonder how big this whole entire factory is. It looks like we're coming up on something in the elevator shaft. If we go to this little spot over here, we see two signposts. Unscrew bolts with the bell drill. Okay. The twin chimneys both have a prize. Interesting, I'll have to make a note of that. Now we're going to travel back down to floor 1. And I just realized that this is a good point to demonstrate the fall proof cheat. So I'm just going to fall all the way down to floor 1. Just a bit of a heads up guys. Brace yourself for pain. Here we go. Whoa! Ow! So much pain. But as you can see, with the fallproof cheat turned on, Banjo and Kazooie don't take damage from long falls, making the cheat very useful. I already did demonstrate this in the elevator shaft, so at some point I might just turn it off, but you guys can let me know if you want me to keep it on permanently. But then again, the more I think about it, the more I realize how useful it will be for future parts coming up within the LP. I might keep it on permanently. I'll think about it as we go. Now, if we step on these two switches with Banjo and Kazooie separated, we will open up the main entrance, and this will allow us to get in and out of Grunty Industries with ease and not having to use Chuffy the Train. Also right over here is the warp pad. Now, there are a couple of things that I want to take care of out here. Get rid of that governor, 
and take out that window up there with an egg. And now we're going to head back inside so that we can find ourselves a pair of claw climber boots. There should be a pair in this crate over here. And now that we have them, we can make our way outside. There should be some claw prints to the right of us. Right over here. And as you can see, Kazooie can walk along the walls. Up here we have a treble clef, and we can get inside the window to gain entrance back inside the factory. Dead ahead of us, we will see a jiggy suspended above a tin top generator. I should be able to make that jump. And plus, nothing can happen if we get close to it, right? Wrong. Intruder alert. Backup, Backup required, required to defend, defend Grunty's, Grunty's treasure. treasure. So as you saw there, the Jiggy is now hidden. To get it, you want to defeat all of these tin tops. It's not so easy to do it in first person mode, especially given the fact that you have so many tin tops right on your tail. I recommend doing this in third person view. Of course, it will make things a little bit harder, but if you just keep at it, you will defeat all of the tin tops in a reasonable amount of time without taking damage. Just like that. Oh, Intruder, Intruder has, has defeated, defeated the, the tin tops. Grunty's, Grunty's treasure, treasure has, has been, been lost. lost. That's right, the treasure is now mine. Now real quick, I'm just gonna grab some more eggs and now we can make our way back down. Now we can switch on over to Banjo and make our way outside. With Banjo's backpack, we might be able to do something about that Baza Super Life battery located above the world entry and exit. So let's make our way up there and see what we can do. To carry it around with you, all you want to do is stun it and then you can stuff it inside your backpack. And now that we have the backpack, and now that we have the battery inside our backpack, excuse me, we can now see where we can place this. So back into the factory we go. I certainly hope that while we're figuring this out, that Banjo doesn't get a jolt of electricity from the battery itself. It could possibly hurt, or it could provide a nice tingling sensation. I don't know. Here's a place that you can put the battery, so we'll just take it out. Additional battery power channel to door. Access is now granted. These are places in which you can place the batteries, and they operate doors such as the one above us, which we will go into. Here inside the waste disposal plant, we will once again find jam jars. Snooze pack. When you're feeling rather low, I know what place that you can go. Left trigger or right trigger followed by right stick right removes your pack. Have a nap to get energy back. That'll be all. Dismissed. Thank you, Jam Jars. By the way, that was the longest speech that I heard you pull off in this game. Now, if we step on that switch, the toxic waste levels will rise. And across the pool, we will see a Jiggy encased in a cube. But we can't do anything to reach it at this time because if you set foot in a toxic waste, you will get burned and take damage. So we're just going to leave it be for now. We'll come back to it once we learn the right move needed in order for us to cross the pool safely. Now let's see, what else can we do on the first floor of Grunty Industries? Well, I'm thinking now that we can make our way inside the trash compactor. Of course, I have a feeling that things are not going to be so easy. Intruder in the trash compactor. Clean up droids, report to floor one. When you set foot inside the trash compactor, security measures will be deployed. There is a jiggy that you can get inside the trash compactor. But when you step on this part of the trash compactor, you will take damage from it. And your health unit will go all the way down to one. You can use the snooze pack ability to restore your health. And I just realized that this is a good place to demonstrate that snooze pack ability. There is the Jiggy that you want to get at. To get it, we need to make our way over to that switch. Oh, so much pain. That's gotta hurt. I feel sorry for Banjo. Now make your way to the other side of the...
trash compactor, step on the switch and you will open the door allowing you to get the jiggy. And real quick, I'm going to have a quick nap and restore all my health. This is the only way in which you'll be able to get the jiggy. There is no way that you can get the jiggy while avoiding the trash compactor. But then again, you could probably do something like a pack whack double jump. But at times, it can be very difficult to pull off. As long as you have the snooze pack ability, you will be fine in retrieving the jiggy. And won't have to worry so much about dying. Okay, now that we finally picked up the jiggy after those incredible moments of pain, we are now going to get a move on. So now we're going to have Banjo and Kazooie reunite with each other and see if we can find our way up to the second floor of Grunty Industries. Banjo, I really hope you're feeling okay. I felt bad for you after going through that trash compactor. Hopefully you don't have a severe headache. Now let's make our way up this wall and see if we can find our way up to the second floor of Grunty Industries along the catwalk. But real quick, I'm going to see what's over here. Let's use the shock jump disc pad to bounce our way up to this pipe. Some eggs. Pretty good, I'll take those. Now inside here is a shock jump disc pad. We can use it to bounce our way up to the second floor of Grunty Industries. Hi, Governor! That's what you get for getting in my way. Up ahead is Wumba's Wigwam. But where's a Gobo? Here's one. And I would go ahead and show you guys what Humba Wumba transforms you into while you are in Grunty Industries, but I'm actually going to worry about that some other time. We're just gonna leave it be for now. You guys will be surprised what Humba Wumba transforms you into. And for those of you who have already played the game and already know exactly what Humba Wumba transforms you into in this world, please don't mention any spoilers. I want to keep things a surprise for those who haven't played the game. And I hope you understand. Now in here we'll see a lot of crates with some feathers, claw climber boots, a secret passageway, and some eggs. Not bad finds. Let's go beyond this passageway next. This reminds me of Fear Factory from Donkey Kong Country. Which is an awesome game, by the way. I might LP it someday. Maybe. Dead ahead of us is a battery, but we are not going to worry about that. We're going to come back to it later. Over here, in this crate, are some claw climber boots, which we can use to get up here. And from here, we can move along the pipe to get over to the catwalk to our right. Again, you want to watch out for the jolts of electricity from the pipes. Otherwise, you will get electrocuted. Now, let's find out where this passageway goes. This takes us to the room with all of the crates and the spy eye cam over there, which I will destroy real quick. Also, we're going to check out that secret passageway over there in a few. I just want to cover things up here for now. Now, dead ahead of us, we have another enemy known as a Toxie Clang. If you get spotted by it, it will charge after you. And if you destroy it, it will release a Toxie Gag, that big green puff of smoke. Do not get close to it, otherwise it will hover above you and you will suffocate within a matter of seconds. There is an easy way to defeat it. First freeze it with an ice egg, then finish it off with a grenade blast. And you'll be in the clear and free of pollution. Of course, couldn't we probably use something easier like a fan? That would certainly make things a little bit more easier. But I digress. Now we're going to have Banjo and Kazooie split up for a bit to take care of a couple of things. And the first thing we're going to do is to make our way along this pipe. Please don't get zapped, thank you. And over here we have another one of those batteries, which I will go ahead and stun and stuff inside my backpack. Alright, now let's get a move on. By the way, you don't want to set foot in the toxic waste below, otherwise a Dragoonda will appear and bite you. So be very careful. Okay, let's make our way back up here and see if we can find ourselves a place that we can place the battery. Here's a spot. The electromagnet chamber door. Additional battery power channel to door. Access is now granted. 
Now, let's see what else we can have Banjo do. Hmm. Well, I'm thinking now that we can check out that secret passageway back in the room with the spy eye cam. Oh, by the way, if you get chased by the Toxie Clang for far too long, he will release that Toxie gag and it will chase after you. So, try to get away from it as quickly as you can. In this passageway, we have the fire exit, and this switch will open the door outside. So we can now gain access to the backside of Grunty Industries, which we will go ahead and check out. This certainly is a big factory. So much to explore here. I hear a governor right behind me, but I'm not going to worry about him. Let's see what's up here. Over here we have some feathers, and that must be... Nope, that's a Minjo. Those Minjos do a very good job at deceiving you. Now, let's see what else we can find out here. Take that, governor. I was gonna get you anyway. Inside this crate, we will see a switch which we'll go ahead and press down. This switch operates the window located up there, and behind it is a Jinjo that we can rescue. To rescue the Jinjo, we are going to have Kazooie do that. But before we do, there is a move within this room that Kazooie can learn from Jam Jars. Real quick, I'm going to take out that security camera again. Wait, did I get that? No, I didn't. There. Now we're going to grab ourselves a pair of Claw Climber boots and make our way over here. Proceed along the wall and make our way over to this little area over here where we can find jam jars and learn the next move. Leg Spring. Want this one? I think you might. It greatly increases your jumping height. Hold down left trigger or right trigger and then press A. Bend your legs and be on your way. That'll be all. Dismissed. Thank you, jam jars. The leg spring is very useful to helping you reach areas that you couldn't before. And over here is an example. The leg spring will be useful in a variety of places, so it's a good thing that we've learned the move now. Now we're going to make our way to the backside of Grunty Industries with Banjo. And have Kazooie rescue the Jinjo. Through the fire exit. Maybe this is how workers escape in case of pollution or fires. But where else would they be able to go? And as I think about it, I don't think that this would be enough space for the workers. I mean, what if they just fall in the polluted water and get bitten by the Dragoonda? Up along the wall we go. This is why I like the claw clamber boots. Because you could just walk along the wall with these. My favorite boots in the whole entire game. Also over here is another pair of Call Climber boots, but I'm not going to grab those. I'm just going to fly my way down, since Kazooie can do that. Now we're going to have Banjo and Kazooie reunite with each other. Oh, by the way, that's the reason why you want Banjo to step on the switch. For if you get off the switch, the window will close back down and trap the Jinjo inside again. So it's a good thing that we rescued the Jinjo with Kazooie's help. Now, let's make our way back to floor 2 of Grunty Industries. And make our way back to the Electromagnet Chamber as soon as I destroy that camera again. I wonder how many of these cameras Grunty keeps around the factory anyway. Okay, we should be getting close to the Electromagnet Chamber from here. Please don't get close to me. And don't release that Toxie Gag, please. That's a really scary enemy. Okay, we should be getting close to it. Here we are. Now let's go inside. Although I do wonder why they call this place the Electromagnet Chamber. Is there like a giant magnet in here or something? Well, I guess we'll find that out soon. Here's a giant switch. Let's see if we can press it. Sensors indicate insufficient weight to activate switch. Well, that's too bad. It seems as though that we're going to have to come back with something even heavier to push that switch down and see what happens when we do. Now, if we move along the catwalk, we will see a switch dead ahead of us, which we will go ahead and press with a beak barge. 
Now let's see what's behind the door. This takes us into the elevator shaft of Grunty Industries. So you can use it as a means of a shortcut in traveling in between floors within the factory. But of course, you can also use warp pads. Whatever way works best for you. On that note, we are out of time for this episode, so I'm going to end things off here. In the next episode, we are going to venture up to floor 3 of Grunty Industries and beyond. So, thank you guys so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and until the next episode, this is Multigame Master 1, over and out. See you later, comrades! Ha! <laughs>